You want to see a good documentary? You got to watch this documentary. Can, can you see that? Industrial Accident, the Wax Tracks Records story. I'm just going to read a quote really quick from Richard Giraldi from the Chicago Sun-Times. It says, as important as chess records was to blues and soul music, Chicago's Wax Tracks imprint was just as significant to the punk rock, new wave, and industrial genres. Now, we're going to talk about this documentary. Greetings and welcome to the film school. Uh, I'm Joe, and uh, as you can see, I got my Wax Tracks uh, Records t-shirt on tonight. And if you're wondering why it's so old and faded, it's because I've had it since 1992, so back off. But anyways, I'm going to talk about this documentary that uh, came out actually a, a while ago. Uh, it's called Industrial Accident, the Wax Tracks Records Story. Um, it, it actually came out, I think, back in late 2017 or 2018. 18, but it was mainly just touring festivals, uh, trying to find a distributor until Wax Tracks eventually just distributed themselves. Came out on Blu ray last April, and uh, uh, it's just a very important film to me, and so I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit. So, just quickly, just going off a little bit of the, the Blu ray here, and by the way, this is the double disc Blu ray that's got 75 minutes of extra footage here, like a second documentary. You should check it out. It's uh, essentially, it's uh, directed by Julia Nash, who was the daughter of um, Jim Nash, who was one of the co-founders of Wax Tracks. And essentially that's what this documentary is about, is the Wax Tracks label, which was around between 1981 and 2002, I believe, or three, I think it was two. Um, this label uh, pretty much for most of the, the late 80s through the mid 90s was probably the most predominant ind uh, independent record label in the United States uh, and just proved that you could launch several successful musical acts on a label that is not corporate owned, uh, which kind of changed the landscape and allowed other independent uh, uh, labels to pop up all over. Um, this documentary is amazing. It's about 90 minutes. And there's interviews with uh, cats like Steve Albini from Big Black and Rape Man. He's also a producer. You got Paul Barker from Ministry, The Blackouts, Revolting Cox, Pig Face, uh, Lard, 1000 Homo DJs, PTP, Acid Horse, and Palehead, uh, Jello Biafra from The Dead Kennedys and the Revolting Cox, Chris Carter from Feeney Tribe, Ministry, Revco, Murder Inc., Pig Face. A uh, ton of these, you know, uh, you got. Uh, Marston Daly, a.k.a. Buzz McCoy from Thruco Colt, and uh, uh, Frankie, um, or I'm sorry, it's Frank Nardiello, who is also Groovy Man from Thruco Colt. There's interviews with uh, Richard 23, and um, so Richard 23, and Patrick Codinus from uh, Front 242. Uh, interviews with uh, Al Jorgensen from Ministry and Revolting Cox and Pig Face, or he's not in Pig Face, but Lard and Thousand Homo DJs, Buck Satan and the 666 Shooters. Uh, you've got uh, Sasha Kanitsko and Ann Ash from KMFDM in here. Uh, Sasha and Buzz McCoy from Thrill Kill also had a side project called Excessive Force, uh, not to be confused with the neo Nazi band, which is why there's no longer, why they no longer release stuff under that name. Uh, thanks, Nazis. Way to ruin things again. You got Ian McKay from uh, Minor Thread and Fugazi. It's Fugazi. Anyways, uh, Trent Reznor from Nine Inch Nails, who was, you know, kind of came from this scene. Uh, Luke Van Acker from Revolting Cox and, and Ministry. Um, even uh, uh, Dave Grohl from Nirvana and Foo Fighters. So a lot of people on this talking about how influential this label was. So essentially, this documentary is the story more or less about uh, uh, Jim Nash and uh, uh, Jim and Danny. Um, Danny Flesher and, and uh, uh, Jim Nash, basically a couple working class guys who in the mid 70s started a record store in Denver, Colorado called Wax Tracks, which that record store is still there. Uh, they sold it in 79 to the people who still currently own it. Uh, as far as I understand, they, they relocated to Chicago where they set up the record store there. 
and uh, eventually started uh, re-releasing uh, discontinued albums and imports by people like Brian Eno and uh, Bauhaus. And, and in fact, they promoted a Bauhaus uh, concert, the first Bauhaus concert in Colorado. And the Bauhaus uh, have nothing but nice things to say about that because Richard 23, or not Richard 23, but, um, uh, oh gosh, I forgot, Co Cozy Fanny Tootie from Robin Gristle and Chris and Cozy is also interviewed here. It's so cool. But David J from uh, um, Bauhaus uh, and Tones on Tail, uh, he even mentioned them in, in his biography, but he's in this documentary as well. Uh, he was just completely impressed with, uh, he and Peter Murphy were completely impressed with the Wax Tracks record store and the amount of uh, selection you could find there. It never really catered to a mainstream audience. Like their music was more focused on punk and post-punk and what would become industrial and electronic music and just sort of goth and kind of everything that was sort of left of the dial for the most part. Um, that's not to say that you probably couldn't go in and get a Prince album there in 1985, but that's not necessarily what they catered to. So taking that idea uh, and distributing and re-releasing albums, pressing them themselves, they started to gain a roster of artists in the Chicago area and they started to uh, release uh, albums and EPs and singles and then they started importing stuff artists like uh, uh, Ministry, Revolting Cox uh, PTP, Acid Horse Thousand Homo DJs, Palehead Front 242, Frontline Assembly uh, Sister Machine Gun uh, Underworld, Nightmares on Wax uh, just a whole roster of amazing artists Thrill Kill Colts, KMFDM um, Meepy Manifesto uh, the KLF, oh God, I could go on. This this label I, I fell in love with when I was in high school. I'm old, don't judge. Uh, this label was what got me through high school. I think if I hadn't have turned on to this music, uh, I would have gone nuts from the bombardment of the really terrible mainstream sounds that I was growing up with, uh, your, you know, your journey and your Boston. And again, if you like those bands, fine, not a big deal. Don't really want to fight here. Just stating I like things that are a little under the radar and a little sort of dissonant and, and uh, uh, decadent and debauched. And this is that kind of stuff. So really this documentary for the most part, and I'm just going to kind of read the back here because this kind of sums it up. There wasn't any master plan. In fact, there was no plan at all. Yet Wax Trax Records launched careers for a legion of bands and un ushered in a whole new genre of music before flaming out an epic style. At the core were founders Jim Nash and Danny Flesher, two music-obsessed fans who just wanted to share their passion without compromise. And this documentary reflects that. And I highly recommend you, you check it out. For me, it was a total nostalgia trip. I learned a lot. I actually knew a lot about this label more than I... I thought I did, but I actually learned a lot of the second documentary. If you um, go to the Wax Tracks store and you buy the, the Blu-ray, <clears throat> get the get the two disc if you can, because the 75 minutes of additional footage isn't just like cut scenes. It's interviews that didn't make it into the final film, but strung, strung together like a documentary uh, mixed with archival footage from uh, Jim and Danny's, you know, eight millimeter camcorder collection, um, which in itself, that documentary alone is fascinating because you've got all these artists talking about their experience with Jim and Danny and the label, uh, where the documentary is more about the, the the rise and fall of this label and sort of the, the lives of Jim and Danny. Uh, and it's a shame that both Jim and Danny are gone now. Uh, unfortunately, I never got a chance to meet these men just to, to give them big hugs and tell them how much their label has meant to me. Uh, I've got so many so many wax tracks releases on cd vinyl and cassette i've got tons of their band t-shirts i still rock a lot of this old stuff uh and when i can i try and pick up old wax tracks uh, vinyl including this new vinyl uh which is the the soundtrack uh i don't know if you can see that does that look pretty good yeah the industrial accident the wax track story it's got i mean we've got revolting cox we've got ministry we've got thrill coke cold Liebach. Pain Cow, Young Gods, Chris Connolly. It's fantastic. It's two disc set, ten track, or it's a single disc, ten tracks. But it does come with a Ministry seven inch of old Wax Tracks Ministry stuff, which was not released uh, while Ministry was on the label. Um, it's also got if, if you get the CD, you get five additional tracks. Why the CD? 
And if you get the digital download, you get six additional tracks. Uh, I wish this came with those additional tracks because three of them are now three of my favorite tracks of all time. So, um, and it also comes with a really cool booklet that kind of gives you a history of the label as well. So if you like uh, documentaries, and I do, if you like documentaries about showbiz and entertainment music, as I do, and if you like specifically music docs, check this one out. You're probably not going to find it on Amazon Prime. You're not going to find it on Netflix, at least not for a while. Probably not on Hulu. Um, I know YouTube, you can actually rent it and check it out there. I think it's just a few dollars. Um, or you can go to the Wax Tracks uh, website, waxtracksrecords.com, and check that out. Or is it waxtracksofficial.com? I can't remember. It's probably on the back here somewhere. And do, 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 do. Eh, well, waxtracks.com. Go and order it and show you love. If you're like me and you grew up with these, these bands and these sounds, uh, this is a dream come true. I wish I'd gone to the L.A. screening that they did last summer. Uh, they had Paul Barker and Inesh and Chris Connolly there, and I think some bands, uh, former bands of the label were playing, and it just would have been incredible. There was a meet and greet, and I could have gotten to meet some of my favorite artists. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that, but still, I give it, uh, you know, three and a half out of four stars. Um, the only reason why I don't give it a full four out of four is because uh, it's, it's technically awesome as this documentary is. Um, it definitely kind of fell to the, the typical talking heads tropes, you know, people kind of talking and wax and philosophical about the label or the history of the label, which is great. That's what you want. But um, I've seen some documentaries recently that have been kind of playing around with that notion and kind of uh, uh, taking you out of that um, more uh, into almost a dramatic narrative, which is kind of exciting. But um, anyways, I mean, three and a half out of four stars isn't bad. It's, it's one of the best documentaries I've seen in the last few years. And there's been a lot of great ones. Uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, Love Gilda, Three Identical Strangers, Andre the Giant, Spielberg, uh, De Palma. There's been some incredible documentaries coming out. And uh, this, I think, belongs in the same roster with documentaries like uh, uh, The Monks, Transatlantic Feedback, or a band called Death. Uh, it's just kind of one of those things that may have slipped below your radar. Uh, and if, it, if it's new to you, hopefully it'll introduce you to a whole exciting sound of music that you've never heard before. If you're like me and you're an old uh, Wax Tracks fan, uh, yeah, it's, it's a perfect love letter. So again, uh, I highly recommend checking it out. And uh, please comment. Let me know what you think. If you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, if you remember the label, if you like the bands, it'd be so much fun to discuss that stuff with you. So uh, thank you for joining me. And as always, like and subscribe. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Wax Tracks. It's my label, man. It's my jam, yo. It's my jam.